All right, in this video, we're gonna go over finding the volume of different geometric shapes, uh, specifically solids. So uh, we're gonna look at a few different shapes and there's a slightly different formula for finding the volume for each one, but the process is gonna be pretty similar. All right, so the first shape uh, would be a rectangular prism. All right, so this would include cubes, but rectangular prisms don't always have to be cubes, right? We could have, uh, let's say, a rectangular prism that was really long, we can make something like this, right, that uh, would then be, oh, that's a pretty terrible <laughs> drawing, but you get the point, right, that uh, it would be a, you know, we could have a rectangular prism that's long and skinny like this, or something like this that's closer to the shape of a cube and that all of the sides are almost the same. Uh, so for all of these rectangular prisms, whether they're cubes or longer like this, the formula is the same, volume equals length times width times height. Now, for the case of a cube, right, the volume would then just be side cubed. Or if we were to have, right, a cube would have the same length for the width, the length, and the height. So we could just call that side cubed, or that's essentially derived from this, and we have side times side times side, right, because all of these would be the same. This would be your length, width, and height. But they all happen to be the same in this case. We could represent side times side times side as side cubed. All right, so length times width times height is what we're gonna use for rectangular prisms, all right? We, it doesn't particularly matter which side you make the width, the length, and the height. As long as you keep it straight in your head, you could make the height go sideways and whatnot. It's just whatever uh, you wanna do as long as you keep it straight. So uh, if we look at an example for this one, we have a rectangular prism here, find the, sh uh, the volume of the shape. Uh, so if you wanna pause this and try this on your own, uh, hopefully you can figure this out, but if not, uh, we're gonna do the work now. So uh, the length, width, and height, we have three different dimensions for this. Again, it doesn't really matter which one we call which. This one looks like more of a height, so we'll call it the height. We call this the width and this the length. All right, so if we plug these values into the formula, right, we should have volume equals length, which we defined as two centimeters, times the width, which we defined as uh, seven centimeters, times the height, which we defined as five centimeters. All right, so if we go ahead and multiply all these numbers together, we should end up with a volume of 70. And our units here, remember we had centimeters here, centimeters here, centimeters here. So our units would be centimeters times centimeters times centimeters or centimeters cubed. All right, so your final answer here should be 70 centimeters cubed. So again, we just take the length times the width times the height, plug the numbers into the formula, and that's all it takes to find the volume of a rectangular prism. The next shape we're gonna look at, a square base pyramid. All right, so here we have a, uh, uh, pyramid, like just think of the pyramids of Egypt, right? That have a square base and then a, uh, an apex up here. One important thing to notice with the square base pyramid, we can express the volume two different ways. We can do one third base times height and the base would just be the area of this whole base here. Or we can do one third side squared times height if we have a square base pyramid like this. So why is that? Well, if we want the area of the base and the area is just a square, then the base uh, or the area of a square would be side squared, right? So the area for a square is side squared and we could represent that as the area of the base because the base is a square. So technically there's two different formulas here that we can use. One third base times height if you're given the area of the base or one third side squared times height if you're given a side length of the square base uh, like is given here. Uh, another important thing to note when you're using the height in this formula, the height is not is not along the side of the pyramid. The height goes from the center of the base to the apex of the pyramid straight up like this. All right, so this blue line here is the height. This red line here is not the height. This is a length of, um, or this is an altitude for one of the triangle uh, sides. We'll use that if we calculate surface area, but for volume, we're really not gonna use it at all. So it's important to know when you have uh, one of these pyramids that you're trying to find the volume for, that the height is not along the side, it comes from the center and reaches up to the apex like this, straight from the center of the bottom to the center of the top. 
All right, so that's an important thing to note there. All right, so if we look at a practice example with a pyramid, find the volume of the shape below. Hopefully you can do this on your own if you want to pause and come back. What we have here is a height that's given to us, right? This is a little off, but uh, the intention here was to get a height that was in the center of the square base and then went up to the apex here. So we're going to use our height as three centimeters. And then we have here four centimeters. That's going to be a side length. Uh, you can hopefully tell because it's labeled on a side like this, but you can also tell based on the units, right? If we have a centimeters as our units, that means that it's just a length and not an area. If we were getting base times height, right, that would mean that this would be an area, which the units for that, in this case, if we're using centimeters, would be centimeters squared. So for an area, your units would be centimeters squared, but for a length, your, your units would just be centimeters. All right, so we can tell this is a side length because it's labeled next to the side and also the units match up with a length and not an area. So if we go ahead and solve this, we said we had the height and then we're going to take a side length here. So we can plug into this formula here. So we would get volume equals one third side squared. So that would be four squared times the height, which would be three. All right, so we plug in all of our numbers into the appropriate spots in this formula, right? Four centimeters went in for the side length and three centimeters went in for the height. So we plug these in, we can multiply out here and we end up with 16 as our volume. Our units here are also going to be centimeters cubed because here we had centimeters squared times centimeters for our height. That would give us centimeters cubed as our final units. All right, so 16 centimeters cubed should be our final answer there. The next shape we have here are cylinders. So cylinders, uh, just like a soup can, right? Uh, we've all seen what cylinders look like. Uh, so what you're going to need for finding the volume of a cylinder is the radius, which goes from the center of the circular base out to the edge of the circle, and then the height, which goes from one base, uh, circular base to another, the other circular base all along the edge here. All right, so the formula for cylinders is pi r squared h. All right, so we have to use pi here. You can kind of recognize this is a similar concept to uh, the rectangular prism, right? The rectangular prism, we found the area of the base, length times width, and then multiplied by the height. Here we're doing the same thing, right? Pi r squared, that's the area for a circle. And then we multiply that by the height. So we're really just doing this base area here times the height, and that's how we find uh, the volume of a cylinder. So if we want to look at a practice, practice, practice example for a cylinder, uh, we got a word problem here. It says the top of a soup can has a diameter of 10 centimeters. The soup can is 20 centimeters tall. What's the volume of soup that you could fit in the can? Uh, we're assuming here that it's a really thin can and basically the volume is going to be the same uh, on the inside as the outer edges uh, for the measurement. Um, so what we have here is a diameter of 10 centimeters. So it's a little tricky, right? In real life, if you were measuring a soup can, it'd be really kind of hard to measure the radius uh, with basic tools because it's hard to pinpoint exactly where the center of your circle is. Or imagining that this was a, an actual perfect circle, it can be hard to, right? If you wanted to measure the radius, you would have to measure from the center out to the edge, but how do you know where the center is unless it's marked, right? Uh, so you, there are tools that you could use to do that, but the easiest thing is just to measure across the diameter. It's a lot easier to tell if you're going midway across the circle than it is to tell if you're going from the center of the circle out to the edge. So uh, we have the diameter here of 10 centimeters and we have a 20, it's 20 centimeters tall. That should tip us off that we're looking at the height. All right, so we have a diameter of 10 centimeters, but what we need in this formula is the radius. So what we're gonna have to do here is calculate the radius based on the diameter, which is just half of the diameter. So our radius here is gonna be five centimeters because the radius is half of this diameter that we were given of 10 centimeters. We also have the height is 20 centimeters. So now we can go ahead and plug into this formula. We'll have volume equals pi times the radius squared, which would be five squared times 20 for our height. So we can go ahead and plug this into our calculator. We're using pi now, right? So this is gonna be, uh, we're gonna need our calculator, which I can drag over here. All right, so we have pi times five squared would be 25 times 
20. We can multiply that out. That would give us 1570.8. Uh, we can round this to the nearest whole number since we were dealing with whole numbers here. Uh, hopefully in a question you'd be given uh, what units or what uh, number of decimal places to round to. But in this case, we could say that the final volume here would be 1571 centimeters cubed because again, we have centimeters here, which is being squared and then centimeters here multiply those together and you end up with centimeters cubed. It's going to be a pretty common unit for volume. We can use other units for volume, liters, inches cubed, things like that. But centimeters cubed is going to be a pretty common uh, unit to use. All right, so that's finding the volume of cylinders. And one of our, our next shape here is a cone. All right, so a cone, just like an ice cream cone they're thinking of, right? It has a circular base and ends up in a point uh, apex like this. So again, same concept with a cone as with uh, the square base pyramid. This height that we're going to use is from the center of the base, the center of this circle, up to the apex, right? So we can measure the height straight up from the center. What we're not going to do is measure the height along the edge of the cone. This is not the height of the cone. The height goes from center to apex. All right, so the height of the cone, and we're also going to use the radius there. So the formula is volume equals one third pi r squared h. So you may have noticed this is just a third of the volume of a cylinder. And maybe in another video, we'll do a little proof of how this comes out to be one third of the volume of a cylinder with an equal uh, radius and height. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna calculate the volume. All right, so we can use this formula to calculate the volume of cones. So find the volume of the shape below. Uh, we have a uh, given radius and height. Uh, the height here, they labeled it outside, but really we can tell that this is going from the base of the cone to the apex like this. We could translate this height over here and we would end up with the same thing from the center to the apex, right? Uh, so we have the radius and the height. We can calculate what we need. If you wanna pause the video and try this on your own, that'd be great. Uh, we're gonna plug in here and we have volume equals one third times pi times the radius squared. So that would be six squared in this case because our radius down here was six and our height would be nine. So we can calculate this out. Uh, if we punch into our calculator here, we have, whoops, sorry, I just wiped out all that work, uh, but we did one third. Let me drag our calculator over. We did one third times pi times the radius squared, which was six squared would give us 36 and then times the height, which was nine. So we multiply all that together. Oops, so I need little multiplication signs in there. So that would give us 339.3. .3. Again, if we round to the nearest whole number, uh, we would end up with 339 for the volume. And again, the units here, we're not given units, whatever they would be, we could say, let's try inches this time. If we had inches and inches for the units, our units would be inches cubed because we have inches squared when we square the radius and then inches for the height. So we end up with inches cubed here. All right, sorry about losing our work there, but if you uh, can backtrack in the video a little bit, you can pick it up if you got lost anywhere. Um, but yeah, so what we ended up with here would be 339 inches squared if that's the units that we're gonna use. All right, and our last shape here is a sphere. So let me drag our calculator out of the way here. So for a sphere, it's just uh, anything spherical. We can uh, think of a basketball, a marble, anything like that that would have the shape of a sphere, right? It's basically just a bunch of circles all the way around. Uh, you could draw a circular equator through, wow, that turned out surprisingly well, a circular equator uh, through the sphere like that, or you can draw one uh, through it like this. Uh, so it's just a whole bunch of circles kind of pieced together uh, to make this uh, three-dimensional sphere. All right, so uh, all the, the only dimension we're gonna need for a sphere is the radius because the radius out to here is gonna be the same as the radius out to here and the radius out to here and everywhere in between. Even if we went in three dimensions like that, right? The radius for this sphere is gonna be the same uh, all the way around. All right, so the formula for this, four thirds times pi times radius cubed. All right, so we can then look and see uh, an example of problem for this. So Steve, he measures the diameter of his basketball to be 10 inches. What is the volume of the ball? 
All right, so we have all the information we need here. We only have one measurement, but we, that's all we need. There's only one variable in this volume formula, and that's the radius. So again here, we're given the diameter of the basketball. Again, a lot easier to measure that than the radius, especially for a sphere. Uh, so we have a diameter of 10. That would give us a radius of 5, because that would be half of the diameter that we had here. So volume equals 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. So that would be 5 cubed. All right, so we can then plug this into our calculator here. If we do now this time 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed, we could do 5 cubed. Oops. 5 to the third power. We got us 523.6. So we're going to round this to the nearest whole number. We call this 524. We can check our units here, right? We had inches as our diameter, which means our radius would be in inches as well. If we cube that, we would have inches cubed as our final units. All right, so 524 inches cubed for this one. So hopefully this was a quick overview of all the different ways to calculate volumes of different shapes. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, feel free to message me and I can try and clear some of this stuff up. We're going to do in the next video some more examples with word problems and how to kind of piece together information uh, to end up using these volume formulas. All right, thanks for watching this video on volume of solids and I'll see you in the next one.